glass is still hot, I'm going to trap some air in my blowpipe here. Add a little bit of air, I just trapped in there, but now we'll get hot and begin to expand at the most pressure. And eventually it'll find its way to the glass, as you can see, and begin to expand it for me. Getting that bubble started to go. Trust the blood hose back attached on here. Go back in for one last even heat. Give this thing some air and hopefully make a nice round shape. And if you guys have questions too, don't don't uh, do that. So don't put them on it. Here's our kiln. This keeps the glass nice and hot throughout the deck. It's about 965 degrees in here. And that's just below the melting temperature. And then uh, tonight, when I'm all finished up, I'll run a kiln cycle. This will take about 12 hours to cool down real nice and slow, and it drops about 50 degrees per hour as it drops down in temperature. That helps to get all the stress out of the glass. Going from the liquid I started with to that shape, uh, it causes a lot of stress in the glass, so you can get that stress out of the glass real slowly. Makes the glass nice and happy again. Yeah. I have a question. Um, wh how did you become a glass blower? Uh, by doing it, honestly. How did you? Uh, well, did you mentor with someone? I have yeah, twin boys, on. and they're both really in fascinated with it. Yeah, I met a guy at the Renaissance Festival that was doing it. Sorry. The Renaissance Festival was oh, in town. Okay. Robert, okay. And I saw a guy doing uh, lamp work, and like we go. And it just stuff. struck a chord with you, yeah. Yeah, and the conversation led to an apprenticeship. Okay. And that apprenticeship lasted about a year, and then. Okay. Uh, the very first time I built a glass of milk was. Interesting. I that's what I was going to do forever. Wow. Yeah, just had to find a way to do it. That was 20 years ago. I have seven-year-old twin boys, and they are both utterly and totally fascinated. We went to Tijuana to, there's a glass factory in Tijuana that yeah, yeah. is um, a bit more thrillingly dangerous, I guess. You have to really watch out the stuff lying, and, oh, yeah. you know, it is. It was just really, they were just absolutely um, mesmerized and they're, they, they're going to yeah, be very happy fun. with this. It's just like 
just kind of really get into a place. A lot of studios in town nowadays, a lot of classes. You like to make your own paperweight knife or pumpkin or something. Okay, I live in Toronto, and I'm sure there are a lot of glass blowers, so there probably are classes. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, around the holidays are the best times to look for it. Around the holidays, okay. Yeah, whether it's Thanksgiving or you know, Halloween or whatever. And you look like you're not, I mean, you're, you're probably nice and hot, but you don't look overly stressed. Your body doesn't, like your face doesn't look too, too overheated. It's not too bad or... today. Like August, September back here is rough. <laughs> yeah. You just, and you just tough it out, yeah. drink lots of water. Yeah, well, like our uh, demonstration time will be, have a bigger gap in between. Right. Basically. It also yeah. will then determine how much we get done in the day. Like ornaments, I'll do five or six at a time sometimes. I notice you're not wearing um, gloves. I, I've done bronze casting, and you have to wear asbestos gloves. Yeah, but I, what we do, they're more dangerous because they absorb the heat after a while and they become hot. Oh, God, yeah, that would make sense. So we have gloves back here that we use, and if we're doing a larger item, we'll actually we'll put these on. Okay, if you're doing some ginormous table, thing, yeah, then. At the very end, yeah, we'll grab yeah. a piece of the stick and fill it away. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, My kids well. are going to love it. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, exactly.